online right now. The hashtag for the action is do no harm. This is a doctor's primary ethics. Ethics that are being compromised by schemes such as the Better Working Together pilot. We are seeing now job centre coaches from Maximus, the US healthcare company based in GP surgeries, such as this one behind us, which is City Road Surgery. What we're seeing here is GPs in this surgery prescribing job coaching for her to reach claimants on employment and support allowance. This is targeted at mental health claimants. Now, a Maximus job coach is based here one day a week. They are piloting this in six GP surgeries across Islington. Now, our biggest fear is there is no formal evaluation of this pilot. That they will eventually roll this out into all GP surgeries across the country in the Health and Work Programme. Now you see a sign attached behind the ratings there that says the Job Centre Stroke NHS. What you're seeing with the Health and Work Programme is the blurring of the lines between healthcare and the DWP. Now our objective is to say to the doctors, keep the Job Centre out of the NHS Remember your ethics of do no harm. Why? Because with pilots such as this, you will see a doctor's ethics of do no harm compromise. Because they will be prescribing job coaching. Because they've been told by the DWP that the clinical final solution, and we've heard those words before, is employability is a health solution. The work is good for us. Work will set us free. And I think we all know where we've heard those words before. And this is history repeating itself. Because what David Cameron said last year was, he said that what he's gonna look at is people that need to lose weight. They have depression. He wants them to have cognitive behavioral therapy. Improving access to psychological therapies. And they're trialing that in job centres right now, in Manchester and Canterbury, which is work focused. You are seeing wellbeing hubs placed in job centres like Peckham, Streatham, that are for mental health claimants in primary care who will get 12 weeks support. And let me tell you, we know it's work focused. And I know a patient who's had the pilot of CBT in Manchester job centre. It was for three weeks. And she had to attend every session. If she didn't, they threatened her with sanctions. And what we're gonna see David Cameron now do is if we don't take the healthcare treatment offered, we don't engage, we will be sanctioned. That is where they're going with this. And we're seeing the medical professionals now lured with money, with funding for their surgeries. And they're not realizing how dangerous this scheme is. Because what you will see is that this pilot will become mandatory in time with conditionality as part of this and what we will see is a mental health patient placed under so much pressure they can't take anymore where a GP surgery will not be a place of safety it will be a place of bullying a place of conditionality and a place of, a, a place of sanctions and what we will also see is that the doctor's ethics will be compromised of do no harm. By putting a patient through a scheme such as this, they will pile the pressure on them and they will crack. We've already lost enough people to the WCA with sanctions rocketing. We've already lost enough of these punitive schemes with sanctions where people have died due to them. So I say to you all today online, across the country right now, Fill out the template letters to your MPs and GPs and tell them no job centre in the NHS. And let me tell you what will happen with this. This kind of scheme will destroy doctor-patient trust. It will destroy your medical confidentiality because the job coach will have access to your medical records. They will doctor your medical records to suit themselves. 
and it will make and it, you will not engage with the surgery. Now we're already seeing with mental health patients and claimants that they struggle to access services as it is. They struggle to access the GP surgery for support because when they go for physical health symptoms with a parity of esteem which the that GPs do not understand, their physical health is ignored for the most part. And you're seeing with a mental health claimant, with a patient, that the lower life expectancy is 15 to 20 years lo lower than any other patient group. And we are seeing ramping up of discharge from secondary care to primary care GP surgeries. With 10% of doctors in the UK have mental health training. It's not compulsory for doctors. Let me make that clear. So what we're saying to doctors here today, to those involved in this shocking pilot, remember your ethics, do no harm. Pull out of this pilot, and we say to all healthcare professionals in the NHS, remember why you came a healthcare professional. It was not to get involved in schemes such as this. Remember, you are a professional, not a collaborator of the DWP. Now here today, we're showing you what the scheme actually looks like. So here in front of us here, we have Dr. Ian Duncan Smith. Cut! Cut! I don't think that Islington quite heard you. Cut! Now, as his name badge actually says there, he's from the Department of Eugenics. Because this where this scheme is going, you see, because when you can't access services and you can't get the support you need, well, you die, basically. And that's the government's overall aim. Stop us accessing services, stop us claiming any benefits, and stop us having any support so we die in large numbers. So what Dr Ian Duncan Smith has there is he has prescriptions for all of you, and he's going to give you one that says, he's going to prescribe job coaching. Now on that prescription, it says A scrounger, 17 lazy house, sink estate, Tory Britain. And on the um, job coach uh, prescription there, it says English job coaching in surgery, major benefits reduction, PRN, regular sanctions, continue until complete cure or death. And the age of the patient on the prescription, 99. <laughs> okay? And it's signed in, under the bomb, it's DWP Surgery, care of the nudge unit at Tory HQ. By Dr. A. Lackey, actually, I think that one. Now, what you're going to have, the doctor there is going to be handing out prescriptions. And here we've got Maximus job coaches here. So they represent the surgeries. Before you throw abuse at them. Now you see there, Mr. Squirrel there. Now Maximus are struggling to recruit, as you know. So they're reaching out to the wildlife. So I think you need to complain to the Society of Prevention for Cruelty to Animals and say, nah, that's not on, you know. So, and look at him, he's crying, you know. Yeah. So, you know, and he's holding a sign, so he's got a conflict right there that says nuts to IDS. Okay. So, we have job coaches here. Now, each job coach has work cures. And they've got them with the, from work program providers. So we've got them with Maximus, we've got them with G4S, we've got them with JHP employability, and um, Dulot, and um, YCMA. So what we need you to do is we need you to come up and get a prescription, and then we need you to then go to the job coach, be good now, because you know, we've got one here who's got a load of sanctions to find out. And we need you to take your work cure and everything's fine then, okay? And then, well, we've got Mr. Maximus Job Coach there, who's got red card sanctions in a whistle. And if you can't take those job coaching work cures, ooh, naughty, naughty. It would be a loss of your benefits right now. And he's got a whistle to say who's been sanctioned. Okay? So step right up and come and see Dr. Ian Duncan Smith. Dr. Ian Duncan Smith.
Sorry. I'm blind, I can't see what you're doing. I'm blind, I can't see what you're waving in my face. I'm blind, I can't read. I need it in braille. I need that in braille as well. For being blind! Another one! Sanction it! Sanction it! Another one being sanctioned! Another one being sanctioned! Dr. Ian Duncan Smith is the lowest ground he's done. I've got to see my public. You answer. I've got to see my public. watching and I deliberately moved away from the whistle. We have today one of the junior doctors from the junior doctor dispute. Yeah? You're showing their solidarity and support to us. So let's welcome Doctor Mama can I stand over that side as well? Because you're the video. Come on. I saw the chat. As I as a doctor that's been working in mental health for many, many years now, I've seen first hand everything you've Oi, conservative, out my way. On our patients also, not just the top, but also the
And now they're saying that they want doctors to be complicit in this cruelty. And I'm here to say that we are not going to go along with this. And we refuse. We completely refuse to forget our duty of care to patients. Because ultimately, what they're telling us is that our number one priority shouldn't just be our patients anymore, but somehow we need to be serving the interests of the Department of Work and Pensions and Ian Duncan Smith. They want us to hand over patient notes for job coaches to write in. They want us to bring job coaches into GP surgeries to come and coach patients into coercive practices and bringing them back into work when they're not ready for this. And ultimately they're saying that doctors and nurses who should be prioritising patient care should be working for them. So what's even more disgraceful is that, that, these, that, these, that this government is telling us that austerity is somehow necessary, that there isn't enough to provide basic services to some of the most vulnerable in society when all the while there's money for war, money for generous tax breaks for the corporations, and money for weapons of mass destruction like Trident, and not enough money to provide for the refugees in Calais who are living in absolutely appalling circumstances at the moment. So these, these completely callous and inhumane cuts are not necessary, they are ideological, and they should just come up and say so. <laughs> IDS I illogical. Just, I just want to finish by, by saying this, that doctors, we don't prescribe jobs, we prescribe care and treatment. And all we want is to be able to provide the best possible care and treatment for our patients. And, and we will not allow this government to bully us or to coerce us into forgetting our duty of care to patients whether it's with these new measures that they're trying to bring in or an unfair junior doctor's contract that is going to put patient safety at risk, we will not, we will not take the line down and we will fight this. And solidarity from the junior doctors. Thank you. Okay, next up we've got one of the student nurses, Danielle. Danielle, join us please. We've got two of the organisers from the student nurses bursary campaign. Anthony, Anthony and Danielle. Hi, I'm Anthony. Um, I'm one of the student nurses in the Bursary of Bus campaign. Prior to doing the start of my degree, I used to work at Menka. And if any of my kids were going to be treated the way that some of the disabled people will be at this surgery, I'd have been disgusted. The, the, the student nurses and all healthcare students, all of us support our patients. All of us support Paul and the work that DPAC have been doing. We're not happy with what's happening proposed here at Islington Surgery. And we just want to say that we're totally out with them.
wonderful flare from when visible. Hi everyone, um, there's various of us here who um, you may have seen on some other um, protests outside the Supreme Court and um, supporting the people in the, in the case against bedroom tax. And we are getting together, I mean, um, in relation to doctors, we have to pay tribute to Dr. Louise Irving who is um, not only um, in the Save Lewisham Hospital campaign, but also pushed within the BMA for the policy against the Workability Assessment and ATOS. And who has been a you know, stalwart supporter of patients' rights. And we are opposed, getting together to oppose all the benefit cuts and the way in which thousands of us are dying and being pushed to the wall and they're creating mental health problems. I mean, they're, they're talking about debt and how, how much debt causes depression. They're causing mental health problems with the austerity. And we want hugs, not drugs. We want money and all the resources that we need for a caring society and an end to these cruel policies. Thank you, Claire. The Tories make us sick. The NHS should make us well. The Tories make us sick. The NHS should make us well. The Tories make us sick. The Labour Council, by the way, the Labour Council. Yeah. This, this is a Labour Council that is bringing red-blooded maximum characters into GP surgery. It's a Labour Council in numbers that has the Metro Health Hub moving to the job sector and it's a Labour Council in Southwark that has the Metro Health Hub moving to the Employment Academy. The Labour Party should be fighting austerity, it should be fighting these fucking reforms but it isn't! It's closing up to them, it's bidding for them, and it's been part of them. And they have to pay, and they have to stop being accountable. And the CCG, they need taking down and changing completely. Yeah. We're born from the next moment about youth and consultation. It is time to put us at the heart of decision making so that we don't get perverse plans like this. We don't get ridiculous practice. Well, the leader of the council turned around and couldn't understand why we were protesting. He said, you've got you mistaken. This scheme is going to help people. You know, the man is deluded. He's living in a little bubble of monsters. And I think we've taken him down a step or two. But we will keep fighting the scheme in this system. We will fight it if it rolls out further. And we're going to change it. We're going to stop it happening. Have we got someone from Boycott Work there? Yeah? Someone's come at all. Yeah, okay. really not aware of is this is all part of the running down of the National Health Service 
and the media do not support us because they're hand in glove with these global corporations that are going to take over our hospitals if we're not careful. So the health service is being run down and every time the government tells you there's been an increase in the money given to the health service, bear in mind that they are constantly asking for efficiency savings and the health service has to save a lot of money, a lot of money to pay it back. The actual gross um, profit uh, in, in, the, in the country has actually, the uh, allocated amount to the health service has actually been reduced. We are 27,000 doctors short. In most of the developed world, you have 8.2 nurses, 9.2 nurses to 100 patients, whereas in England, we have eight nurses. It's the same with the doctors. The ratios are so much less in this country because they're constantly running down the health service. The BBC never educate the public about this, or that in their charter they are supposed to inform and educate the people. But where have most of the people working the BBC come from? They have come from the Bollingdon Boys Club. And we know, and we know that these people have never experienced what it's like to live a real life. They have always been subsidised all the way through and they don't know what it is to be vulnerable, to be short of money and to actually have some sort of affliction or some problem. They have always been, all the way through, carried by the wealth of their parents. And this is continuing, so please, we need to have a big awareness raising exercise on what is happening to the whole of the National Health Service. Thank you. Could somebody please tweet out that the stream previously from Occupy May Day has ceased because of equipment failure and the link to this account so people can watch the further live videos, please. Excellent, thank you very much. They won't go to do anything about it. And suddenly, a couple of weeks ago, I was just looking through an email that had been sent from the Health Information Centre, which is the centre that's going to download the care data. They just said very casually, from next week, we will be downloading copies of medical certificates. So. What's happened over the last year or so is that medical certificates have become online. They used to just be handwritten. And um, unless you wrote medical three, med three prescribed, then no one would know that it had been prescribed. Now they're all part of the uh, EMA system. So the government's now able to download it. And GPs don't have a clue that this is happening at all. And um, I've been trying to follow up around it. But it's, um, this is happening without GPs' permission. And I think the important thing is, whenever you go to your doctor, you must say, I do not give permission for my data to be downloaded by the Health Information Centre. Oh, right. Thank you very much. It is frightening what they're doing. They're attacking us on every front. And our only response must be to join these campaigns, to join the struggle, to unite and to fight. And part of that fight is the cleanest campaign that we've got Petra here. Oh, he needs a minute. Yeah, so we've got Robert from Wake Up Work Fair. This scheme that's going on in Islington at the moment, Working Better, which aims to embed employment services into the wiring of the healthcare system in their own words, is part of a trend in workfare schemes in this country, which make coerced, unpaid labour for unemployed people, makes it more and more about individual psychological failings of unemployed people. If you're seen to be lacking the right attitude, 
if you're seen not to be enthusiastic about implying, applying for 50 jobs a week, then you can be sent on unpaid work for half a year at a time. This unpaid work is supposed to make you employable. It's supposed to give you a pliant disposition. It is supposed to make you the kind of, the kind of supplicatory person that will take any job going because you are being pressured into any job going. If you refuse, your benefits will be sanctioned. All your money will be taken away for at least three months. Sorry, at least four weeks and up to three years. So this Working Better pilot is part of a much broader, a much broader trend. It makes unemployment an individual psychological problem. It blames unemployed, unemployed people. It says unemployed people are deficient. And we absolutely reject this. We say employment coaches have no place in GP surgeries. But this kind of measure, the kind of system that unemployed, that un the employment coaches are part of, it has no place in this country either. We want an end to benefit sanctions, an end to workfare, an end to benefit conditionality. Thanks. Cold. In the fires of he hell. To go back to his mansion, he says. The mansion that has ten bedrooms that yeah, he's uh, yeah, getting rent free. Yeah. While people are being subjected to the bedroom tax. Shameful, really. So, unfortunately, uh, Dr. IDS didn't hand out all the prescriptions he's supposed to. Yeah. Now, you're not doing your job down there very well, are you? So I'm afraid he's going to have to do the circuit of handing out some more um, job prescriptions to you scroungers. Well, he's just not good enough, really. That's why he's getting paid, you know. To hand out prescriptions to you job to you uh, lazy scroungers who are not working right now. So come on, Dr. IDS from the Department of Eugenics. What are you doing over there? Think you need to hand out some more prescriptions? Come on, take them out. Now, if you see the prescription, they're age, you're, you're 99. This is where they're going. So, come on, step right up and get your prescription from Dr. Ian Duncan Smith from the Department of Eugenics He's ready. He's willing to such a little moment's notice. And he's willing to take your money from you. So come and get a prescription. Step right up. The job coaching starts here. Come on, Dr. IDS, you're going to give us a wave and some noise. You got anything to say? Or are we going to get the silent treatment? Just how many have died due to the work capability assessment? We can't hear you. So, step right up and get the Sanction! Sanction! They sanctioned the breast photographer. They sanctioned the breast photographer. They didn't get enough hours under Universal Credit, so they sanctioned him. Oh, dearie me, breast photographer, what are you like? And, you know, we're just so keen to have you on their work program as well. I don't know. Come on, Maximus Job Coaches, what are you doing? Are you handing out any more of these work yours or what? Oh, we can't hand out enough of them, she said. She can't hand out enough work yours. Oh, An activist from Boycott Workfare has been sanctioned. They're boycotting Workfare, but they sanctioned him anyway. All the school wants to get in on the act. <laughs> now the squirrel's doing a little dance here. Obviously Maximus, you see, you know, these squirrels who work for Maximus, she's really got to watch them. Now if you see this black card up here, it says nuts to IDS. So let's hear a big scream, right? Let's hear you say, nuts to IDS. Councillor Dick, stop speaking of sick! 
Hang on, hang on. This little baby here hasn't been sanctioned yet. like everybody else. What you don't need is someone coming along to bully you and to sanction you and to deprive you of your lifeline. So if United Voices of the World is here and will be supporting this campaign until these so-called appointment advisors get out of GP surgeries and get out of everybody's lives for good. Story, same old 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 story, same
Play my story. Yeah. 